Welcome back, so good to see you again. So lately I've been seeing a lot of confusion on how to craft the shallow grave so that you can actually make your zombies. First off, you have to learn magic. For an example, we're going to go to Sepamaru right behind the temple quarters where the set religion priests spawn in. You guys can be knocked out and put on your wheel, but we're going to get into that later on. Right now we're just going to kill them off and hopefully one of them will drop the sorcerer's map. If you don't find it right in their inventory after you kill them, you can always open up the burlap satchels and hopefully get a map that way. Click use on your map and it's going to show you a spot here in the exiled lands. Let's run over to it and I'll show you where we are on the map. The sorcerer's map brings us to E5 on the map. And this is also where you'll find Shale Back Hollow. We just need to make it all the way to the back end of this cave. You can fight all of the undead shale backs in here or just run past them all. If you do run past them, they'll only follow you so far as they won't chase you up the stairs here. Once you make it up to the top of the stairs, just run straight back into the thaumaturgy bench. Sitting right in the middle of the bench, you'll find a new recipe that teaches you the basic sorcery. You can climb over to the other side of the waterfall where you'll find five chests to loot plus a legendary chest that you need a skeleton key for. Also, you will gain corruption the whole time you're in this cave now. We're all done in here, so we're going to head back to our base and craft our thaumaturgy table. Now that we're back at base and we've crafted our thaumaturgy bench, we're going to start crafting tomes of Kurok. We need to unlock eight tomes of Kurok to unlock the shallow grave. Each one of the tomes of Kirok are going to require different ingredients each time. And we'll take a quick look at each one of them so you know what to expect. For those of you that are unaware, if you put any sorcerer in your thaumaturgy bench, whether it be a sorcerer 1, 2, 3, or named sorcerer, it will unlock the ability to craft your own sorcerer spell pages. You can craft these from scratch or by combining 10 dead sorcerer pages together. Now we'll take a quick look at the other spells up to spell number 8. Alright, now we're ready to craft our shallow graves. But first we're going to need to grab 50 compost and 300 stone. And we'll get out our construction hammer. We can find the shallow grave under the sorcery tab. Now we can craft it. There's our shallow grave. Now there's a couple of things to note about this. This would be the bottom end of it. This would be the top end of it. You don't want to block the top end with any placeables, any walls, or anything like that. When you place a knocked out thrall in it, you'll need to be at this end to do your summoning. Now we simply go knock out a thrall, drag it back here to the shallow grave. We place it into the shallow grave. Now you simply open the shallow grave just like a workbench. Select on your raise the dead icon and craft.
Our once pretty dancer lady is now this ugly resurrected corpse, but she does have 11,919 health with an armor value of 315. Let's take a real quick look at her stats now. These corpses are raised out of the shallow grave, fully leveled up with full set of perks. As you can see, our dancer's 3 has a strength of 22, agility of 23 minus 5, vitality 20 plus 18, and grit 29 plus 11. And for the perks, she got thick skull, redeemed, and nearsighted. These resurrected Directed corpses will also have nearly double the melee damage output of their normal counterpart. And of course, you can always pick up your shallow grave. Now, you do not get a shallow grave back in your inventory. However, you do get all the resources returned to you. Now, a lot of these T3 dancers that I've been crafting have been coming out with exceptionally well HP numbers. Like, for instance, this one here has 9,274 hit points. So let's see what we get with a knocked out Delincia Snow Hunter. First thing you're going to notice are the hit points are nearly not as good as the Dancer 3's coming in at 6,964 hit points. Most of them that I've tried on here, their stats are quite a bit better than the Dancer 3's, but the main difference is, is their melee damage multiplier is almost double that of the Dancer. Here we have Spinus the Marauder. Let's see how he comes out of the shallow grave once he's converted to a corpse. Now Spinus comes out with 6,321 HP, but look at that armor value, 1,011.5 on a raised corpse. That is freaking insane. I think we're going to be putting him up against some bosses pretty soon. Now let's see what we get when we put Orvar Battleborn in there, who is a Sumerian Purge Berserker. So our buddy Ovar ends up with 4,567 HP and only 534 armor. I think I'd have been better off keeping him as a purge fighter. Although I'm really not sure what his melee damage multiplier is. One last thing I want to talk about is the food that you can feed these resurrected corpse. Now you'd think an undead thing would like to eat human flesh or putrid meat, but no, that actually gives them the food poisoning buff, which does more damage than healing. So for now, I would stick with feeding them anything you would feed your own character. That'll at least give them one point of healing per second across the board. And yeah, they don't get a whole lot of healing from food, but it is something better than nothing. So feed your zombies good food, and they might hang around a little longer. One last bonus tip here. No, you cannot put pets in the shallow grave. The only type of thrall you can put in there is a thrall capable of performing combat. So I hope you found this helpful, and if you did, please leave me a thumbs up to let me know you liked it. And stick around, make sure you're subscribed, because in the next day or two, we are defending a purge with nothing but zombies.